Hey there, I am Andrew Deering, and this is my group, Scale Counting Automation. Our group is going to construct an automated machine to count and bag fasteners, such as nuts, bolts, and screws. The idea for this design came to us from my cousin, Will Deering, and his company, ProFast Supply. He needs a machine for this purpose because the current method is less than efficient. Hello, my name is Devin Mooney. Will's method is definitely inefficient and time-consuming. He takes the parts and he puts them on a scale to measure um, how many parts there are. The parts are then moved into a bag by hand, and then those bags have to be sealed in a separate area. This does take a while, and there is a need for an automated way of doing this. Hi, I'm Sean Staley, and you're probably wondering why Will can't just buy a automated counting and bagging machine off the shelf. Um, most of the commercially available automated counting and bagging machines are designed for very large scales such as assembly lines. Um, because of this, they have a lot of excessive and extensive features that aren't really necessary for this application, such as automatic labeling and uh, complicated electronic control interfaces. Um, the result is these machines are very expensive. Our project is designed to be a lot cheaper by minimizing the amount of features that Will won't use, as well as uh, reducing the overall throughput of the machine, making it run slower. Uh, the result is a better product, more suited for Will's application. This is our block level diagram. The delivery system takes in pre-sorted hardware that is loaded into the top of the machine. It then delivers the regulated flow of hardware to the counting system. The counting system is where the hardware is weighed. Once the hardware is weighed, it is then dumped into the bagging system where it is sealed. The graphical user interface will be on an external computer and takes in the type and quantity of parts going through the machine. Once the user has the parts loaded, this information is put out to the microcontroller. Microcontroller starts the whole process by sending out logic signals to each motor. During the process, there is feedback from the counting system to the microcontroller such that the current weight is known. Unfortunately, the signals output by the microcontroller are simply not powerful enough to drive the motors directly. Because of this, we need the motor controller system. The motor controller system combines the logic level signals from the microcontroller with external power to create signals strong enough to drive the motors directly. The frame block connects all of the subsystems together physically. It also encloses the entire project for safety. The power supply and distribution block takes power from an outlet and gives all the electronic components the power they need. The input hardware for this machine consists of sizes ranging from as little as number four washers to as large as two inch bolts as decided by the customer. The delivery system consists of a loading bin, a funneling chute, and a vibrating motor. The upside down pyramid is the input bin for the hardware. Our customer has requested that this bin hold at least 800 cubic inches. The distance between the bottom of the loading bin and the chute will be varied manually depending on part size. After the parts fall from the bin to the chute, the chute has a slight downward slope with a vibrating motor attached to the bottom. We have chosen a lightweight material for the chute to lessen the load on the motor. This motor can vary speed from 0 to 6,000 RPM to output a proper flow of parts to the counting system. The counting system receives a regulated flow of hardware from the delivery system. It periodically outputs batches of counted hardware to the bagging system. Hardware is counted by weight. We chose to measure the hardware by weight so the hardware of all shapes and sizes can be measured. Also, Weight can be measured fairly quickly and easily. If the hardware is flowing into the system too quickly, it may become difficult to get an accurate measurement. Because of this, the microcontroller will slow the rate of flow into the counting system as the batch nears completion. The customer has specified the minimum accuracy and quantity of the counting. This device must be able to count up to 100 of any component. In addition, no batch can have less than the number of components specified, but it may have up to 10% in addition. Based on these requirements, we were able to determine both the minimum accuracy and maximum weight of the hardware. 
To meet these requirements, we must be accurate to at least one gram and be able to handle a load of at least one kilogram. A load cell will be used to measure this weight. A load cell was chosen because of its simplicity and low cost. They provide a variable voltage directly proportional to the force put upon them. For the microcontroller to read this voltage, an ADC will need to be used. Although the microcontroller is equipped with a 10-bit onboard ADC, it is not accurate enough to get the precision necessary. To get the needed precision, a 16-bit offboard ADC will need to be used. A servo is used to dump the hardware batches into the bagging system. This block includes bags, rollers, stepper motor, bag funnel, and bag sealer. Project requirements are that all the hardware is loaded into the bags and the bags are completely sealed. A smooth flow of the bag stream for bag opening and to prevent jamming. The bags will be connected in one continuous stream. The bagging system starts with a roll of 4,000 bags, pre-opened on one side and separated by perforations. The machine will use bags with dimensions of up to 5 inches by 7 inches by 4 millimeters. The bag stream will be propelled through the machine by a 12 volt stepper motor. To maintain bag tension, resistance is applied to the rolls of the bag. The motor will be connected to one of the two rollers. The rollers are positioned close enough together to force the bags through the system. The bags will slide over the a plate and under the bag funnel. Once the bag is in the correct position, the bag stream will reverse, allowing the bag funnel to slide into the bag. At this point, the bagging system is ready to receive the counted hardware. The counted hardware flows through the bag funnel into the bags. Once the bag is full, the roll of bags will advance forward, removing the bag funnel. The bag sealer shown here doesn't close automatically. We chose to use a servo to actuate the sealer. After the parts are sealed in the bag, the stepper motor will receive a 12 volt PWM signal shown here to move the bag stream to the next bag. This diagram shows the four coils that are inside the stepper motor. These coils are used to determine the position of the motor. <coughs> the process will then be repeated until the correct number of bags is filled. The stream of filled bags will not be cut during this process, fulfilling the customer requirement of one continuous bag stream. The microcontroller receives a total weight needed per bag and a start command from the graphical user interface. Once the microcontroller has this information, a PWM signal is sent out to the vibration motor for max RPM. As parts fall from the delivery system to the counting system, the current weight is fed back to the microcontroller. As the weight increases towards the total value desired, the microcontroller slows the vibration motor to add accuracy to the counting system. Once the max weight is reached, the vibration is turned off and a position PWM is sent to the servo in the counting system to dump parts into the bag. Once the parts are inside the bag, a PWM is sent out to the stepper motor controlling bag motion. The bags are rolled forward until they are in position to be sealed. A PWM signal is sent out to the servo controlling the sealer. The sealer closes for two seconds and reopens. The bag roll is then reversed enough for the next bag to open. The motor controller system amplifies the logic level signals from the microcontroller to create signals powerful enough to drive the motors used in this project. Our current design uses one DC motor, one stepper motor, and two servos. Three Arduino motor shields will be used to amplify the signals. We need three to power the three different physical stages of our project. We chose the Arduino motor shields because they can amplify all the different signals that we are using. They're also available from several different vendors with very small lead times. The design has also been extensively tested and works with our AVR microcontrollers. The motorboard shield was designed to send 9 volt signals at up to 1 amp nominal, but we plan on modifying our boards for use to up to 12 volts. This is our proposed timeline for the project. We're going to have all of our final design documentation completed by December 5th. This includes all CAD drawings and schematics. We plan to receive all of our parts and have them ready by January 6th. Uh, we plan to put them together into the individual blocks two weeks later, followed by um, completing the debugging by two weeks. <laughs> this means that all of the blocks will function by themselves properly, but may not work together as a functioning machine. 
fun to put all the parts together and see what we have two weeks after that. Um, and then we'll have a full month to debug the machine and get all the interfaces working properly. Um, that'll give us a week to validate it and come up with evidence that our, our machine functions as specified, which will give us until May 12th to get all the documentation ready for the engineering expo.